Who was Manchester United number seven after Cristiano Ronaldo? Ooh, Anthony Valencia. Nah. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. So did you see the Nigerian kid that does drugs? Yep, what it's always think? nice. But the performance from the team, it's not <laughs> as beautiful as the kids. So, well, it's, I think, the How first one... It? Is it a hit or a miss? Of course, it's always a hit mm -hmm. when it comes from Nike. Yeah, so it's yeah, always yeah. a hit. But I think I prefer the other one during the World Cup yeah, yeah, to yeah, this yeah. one. But this one is equally very, very nice. Yeah. Oh, the recent ones, this is one of the ones I don't like as much. Like, I like the one that, like, you know, the green is down the middle and then mm -hmm. the one that was white and then the green on the side. That green is a little too green for me. I mean, I'm wondering why they are releasing a new kit. Why are they going to wear the kit too? At first, I thought oh, this was the kids for a World Cup, but it's no World Cup, so come, why are you releasing come, it now? Come on, it's, it's just the contract there. You should release um, it another time, I beg. You don't need your kids. Well, Who's buying your kids? Why are we buying your kids? I have one. You bought the new kids? No, I have one from the yeah, last uh, one. The last one, but this one that just come out now, why are you buying it now? I'm not going to buy it, obviously. Is I'm it, not going to buy it. <laughs> it's not your club. Yeah, from what you said, the first one is going to sell more than this because, mm. like you said, no competition, no proper competition. So yeah, wait, yeah, exactly. And so, but it's. So, yeah, that's quite disappointing. But let's start today's episode with our hit or miss section. First things first, um, I don't know if you've been hearing the news, you guys have been hearing the news, but Todd Bowley, Chelsea's new owner, has some innovative ideas of how to make football more exciting. And first of which is the All-Star game, a Premier League All-Star game. He thinks maybe the North versus the South will be a good game. What do you think? Well, it's... What do you think of the idea of there being an All-Star game, first and foremost? The idea, I think, from the entertainment aspect, I think it's very nice. But from the professional aspect and what you expect from the players, if it's mm. going to make it competitive, I think, I think it's going to be a big miss because these players, I don't think they get enough rest mm. after mm. the after mm. the, the, the league is done yeah. and other competitions. Yeah. So, but from the entertainment aspect, broadcasting views and mm. financial aspect, I mm. think it's a very it's a very good one. Yeah, definitely. Just like you said, I believe. Um, from the marketability of it, the branding that yeah. can be of it can be a great opportunity. And I feel like, yeah, you're right, they already played too many games. Too many now. games. Adding an extra game is really just stressful yeah. players who are already getting injured. But I feel like they could find a way to add it into the calendar. Like, I feel like maybe it could replace the community shield. Because who cares about the community shield? <laughs> well, so like, yeah, it's, it's a very nice this, suggestion. It can but... be more lucrative. Um, so financially, it can be more lucrative. That money can be invested into the rest of the football pyramid. You can improve the championship, improve the leagues below, yeah. and so forth. Because that's what happens in the NBA yeah. and in um, in American sports. They make so much money off all these spectacles. Right. In American sports, I think they, they get at least I think four months break after yeah. the international. That, that after is true. That is true. So I don't think. So the main problem is that footballers already play too many. Yeah, games. Yeah, they play too uh, many games. Far too many games. So. But in a fantasy world where this were to happen, because like you said, it's it's exciting from very a very exciting standpoint. So we can we can draw up in our heads. So what we've done at the moment is we've built two teams, a South team and a North team. I'm going to be taking the South team and Gerald's going to be doing the North team. So um, this thing, you guys can tell us what you feel about these teams, whether I think players should be out. You can rip them up if you like and yeah, comment in the comment section what you think of our teams. So for the South, I've got our Ramsdale in goal, which James are right back, a centre-back partnership of Thiago Silva and William Saliba, Zinchenko at left-back, Declan Rice in DM with Kante and Odegaard by his side. Odegaard obviously further forward. Up front, I have Son Heung Min, Harry Kane, and Raheem Sterling. And I guess maybe I should pick a manager for this team as well. My manager will be um, Antonio Conte. I think that's the best manager in London at the moment. Okay, that's even without making. My team, I know that the North they're going to batter the South. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just the North, I think the three major teams, United, City and Liverpool, I think they sh mm. the team should consist of them. So in goal, I think I should have Ederson, right back, Trent Alexander Arnold, centre backs, Diaz, Van Dyke, left back, Robertson, uh, midfielders, Rodri, Kevin De Bruyne, Bruno Fernandes, Salah, Ellen Holland, of course, and um, mm. Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, off the top, the North is probably going to batter the South. The North probably has like the best five players in the league in and that one team. But um, and the, the best manager. Pick. And Pep. the best the best manager. <laughs> so yeah, Pep, 
Klopp is the best manager at Shabba. We can leave that discussion for another day. But why did you go Cancelo over, I said, Robertson over Cancelo? I think Robertson has, normally I prefer left-footed players mm. playing on mm. that side of the of the pitch and Cancelo is equally good. Mm. Maybe him being on the bench is not as well, but I think I prefer Cancelo all day. He's all game round and, mm. yeah, mean, yeah. and Robertson, I mean. Cancelo gives a little bit more going forward, but yeah. I don't think he's solid as Robertson um, and, defensively. And Robertson also gives a lot going forward. Going like forward he equally. Seasons he doesn't just assists. have that flair that Cancelo yeah, yeah, has. Yeah, yeah. Cancelo has that je ne sais quoi. Certainly. But another concern for me should be Alexander Arnold defensively. Mm, definitely. I think Son is going to give him a tough time from your team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think he's. But I mean, a, if you have Rodri shielding him, Ruben Diaz and Van Dyke around him, it should be alright now. Yep. Yeah. It should be alright. So, yeah, those are our Premier League North versus our Premier League South teams. Obviously, the North is where the strength lies in the Premier League at the moment. And it might even increase because Newcastle has the furthest up North and they're only going to get more money to potentially dominate this our fancy fixture. Yeah. But yeah, those are our teams. You guys should let us know your teams in the comment section below. Comment on our teams. Let us know what you think. And yeah, <laughs> share with your friends and so on. On to our next segment. So yeah, our question of the day is, what do you think of Gareth Southgate's England selection? Okay. Yeah. So the main news from this is Ivan Tony has been selected for his first England call-up at all levels, which is great news. He's in the squad. Um, Jaden Sancho is not in the squad. Jack Grealish is in the squad. They have their four right backs in the squad, which I think is interesting. Yeah. Like, is he going to keep going with that? And Jude Bellingham is in the squad yet again. I think those are the main highlights. Apart from that, nothing else. Yeah, nothing what else. What do you think? Well, Sancho not being selected, obviously, I'm going to talk <laughs> about it. It's, it's a hot one for Sancho personally. And, and it's a good response to that yesterday night when he scored in the mm. Europa League, just to make Southgate know that, yeah, Are you watching? not selecting me is, is kind of a bad decision. But then for Eric Ten Hag, I think after the international break, they're playing City next to so mm. get enough rest. I think Sanchez is probably one of their best players right now. So yeah. I think um, is, um, personally, I think Eric Ten Hag will be happy with that selection, but not for Sancho. But he deserves a place in that. England. Yeah, because if he's not getting a place now, a place in the World Cup might be tricky. And it's interesting because while he was at Dortmund, people thought that the reason he wasn't getting a place when he was playing was because he wasn't playing in the Premier League. Yeah, yeah. Now he's come to the Premier League and he's lost the place. So, yeah, it's quite unfortunate. I'm also happy to see Tammy Abraham in the squad. I hope he can stay in the squad and then go to Qatar as well. Yeah. Very good player. Yeah, I mean, um, they have. Um a good sele selection of um, centre forwards mm -hmm. with Evan Tony coming in right now. They're all think, backups to be yeah, honest. Yeah, they're all backups to Harry Kane. But I think Evan Tony deserved, he deserves to be called up. So obviously it's been a UCL week. Tuesday and Wednesday fixtures went down and um, a couple of interesting things happened. Um, Liverpool finally got a much needed win. First win in Champions League, it's only been two games, but a win that we very much needed. Yeah. Um, some people played in one other B League tournament yesterday, the Europa League. Um, <laughs> how, do you, how do you see your Europa League games? Yes, yeah, like the, I said in the last show, back. yeah, I said in the last show that United are obviously going to top that group, and um, it was a good performance last season, even though um, last night, even though it was against Sheriff. For, not, mm. Let's not forget that Sheriff beat Real Madrid in the Champions League last yeah. season. So I think it was a good performance. It was good. It was a good goal from from Jaden Sancho, the team goal, and. Um, also, Ronaldo getting off the mark, he needed um, he needed that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good performance. They needed that win, and they, they, it's just um, one of those nights. Yeah, United uh, they're picking up wins under Eric Ten Hag. Like the um, you might not be playing the total football that he planned to play initially and what he attempted to play in the beginning, but it looks like he's taking a more pragmatic approach and he's getting results. So yeah. hats off to Eric Ten Hag. Also in the Champions League. Erling Haaland was back at it again and it's getting scarier and scarier every time this guy plays. Like, I saw a stat that at, <laughs> at this rate, this guy is going to score 102 goals this season if he keeps scoring at this rate. And at this rate. It it's... looks like he can keep scoring at this rate. Like, all the records in the Premier League are up for grabs now. Yeah, I mean, he's, he, he scores when he wants. He, it... scores, he scores when he likes. and um, He scores how he likes. Uh, how he likes, exactly <laughs> my thoughts after seeing that Celebrate goal against, how he likes. against man his is... former side. I mean... I wasn't, he had no rights. He has no like right that. to do that. Like, he's scoring goals like Ibra, then he'll score goals like Mbappe, then he'll bully your centre back. Like, what is he doing? Exactly. Man, he's, he's absolutely a. No, he's really annoying me. I can't even pretend. No, I'm I, really I, annoying. I, I, I love, I, I love Erlen Halang as a striker. I love him. He's, 
a striker that actually I think others coming up should look up to, mm -hmm. even though he's different from um, Kylian Mbappe. Mm -hmm. Because when you talk about generational talent, mm -hmm. bring up Kylian Mbappe mm -hmm. and Ellen Haaland. And I think right now he's the man on fire. He's on fire. He's on fire. And I think he will, he will keep scoring when he wants and how he likes. Also in the Champions League, speaking of um, Kylian Mbappe, PSG are still on fire to start the season. Messi, Neymar and Mbappe all scored in the Champions League game for the first time. They're, they're performing in the league. Messi has the most assists in Europe at the moment. Neymar's stats are off the charts. Mbappe is doing what he's been doing. Do you think PSG have a chance at winning the Champions League this season? Do you think this is their best chance? They always have a chance. Mm. I think there's something just missing. I don't know what that is, to be honest with you. I think they got to the final round last yeah, two seasons or yeah. three and they were beaten by Bayern. But I think they have a very good chance right now. I think tipping, it's too early, but I think semi-finals to the final round, tipping PSG, Man City, these are the two teams, that, and Real Madrid. These are yeah. the three teams that I can actually call now that will get to that level. And um, PSG, I think they have a very, very good chance of reaching that semi-final at least. So you guys, let us know your Champions League predictions in the comment section below. Like, it's nice and early, so if you're right from this point, that's something present. Everybody's still in the competition. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us know your predictions now. Maybe you might get a present. Like, you know, we'll be hooking you guys up and stuff. So <laughs> comment, share with your friends and all that. So those are our predictions for the Champions League and our recap of what's happened so far. You guys should let us know what you felt about the games that have happened already and what you think is going to happen coming forward. You can also bet on all these games, all the group games, all the games, all the way up to the final on Betwinner, of course. Betwinner come through for you with customized accumulators, birthday specials, instant cash outs and a whole lot of other great stuff. So yeah, Gerald, tell your friends in the comment section, tell your friends, hit up Betwinner, follow them on all their social media platforms to stay up to date. We want to wrap this up in a new way. We're going to play a little question game and the loser has to kindly vacate the set for the winner. So we're going to <laughs> both be asking each other questions, three questions each around each other's club. I hope Gerald hasn't gone to check me and ask me some questions from the 60s. I'm ready for me, you. I'm nice too. I'm ready for you. <laughs> All right, you can kick it off. So where you, you've got the rules down. Whoever loses, they case the set. Yeah. Let's go. You can start. Um, first of all, Liverpool questions. First question, what is the name of the bird on the Liverpool's badge? Liver bird. Correct. Let's go. <laughs> Second question, who assisted Origi's win against Spurs? in the UCL final? Dramatic. Oh, correct. <laughs> I know that. Last question. <laughs> Who scored the first goal in the UCL final versus AC Milan in 2005 to ignite the comeback? Uh -uh. My guy now, Stevie G. These are, these are easy questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've been... Okay. Alright, let me ask you, Sham. I've been a little harsh, I can't lie. <laughs> Who assisted Oligon Asoche in the UCL final? Sherrigan, Teddy Sherrigan. Okay, that's good. Who was Manchester United's number seven after Cristiano Ronaldo? Ooh, Anthony Valencia. Nah. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. So should I give you the answer? No, I'll no. give you the answer. No, it's done, it's done, it's done. Next question, we don't have one. <laughs> you missed that one. But wait, who was the answer? The answer is Michael Owen. Oh my word, yeah, I remember. And the third and final question to make the scoreline a little more respectable, you know, so your fans can go. <laughs> Consolation goal you get. Who is Manchester United's longest ever captain? Ooh. I've got two names, but I'm not quite sure. I'll I give think... you say the two names. If one is right, I'll give it to you. Yeah, I think um, the two names I've got, um, Steve Bruce and Roy Keane, but I'm going for, Roy Keane was between 90. I'm going for Roy Keane. <laughs> Who was that? Brian Robson. <laughs> Brian Robson? Oh. Yeah, that, that's a little far back. So it's before both our time. But um, yeah, that's your longest our captain. Now you know. <sighs> so yeah, thanks for rocking with us. You can excuse me, please. <laughs> Next time, I'm winning. <laughs> Let's have it now. <laughs> so yeah, thank you very much for rocking with us for yet another episode of Shangalo. Thank you, Gerald, for being a grateful host and being magnanimous in defeat. Comments in the comment section, like, subscribe, share with your friends and we'll see you next time. Peace.